What's up, everybody? Coach Willis here from Willis Performance Training, and I am here with the Alatuna lacrosse legend class of 2020 and future Cleveland State all-star, Amiri Austin. What's up, man? Nothing much. What's up with you? You know, doing the same old, just like everybody else during this uh, this whole C-Virus vacation, just trying to stay sane and positive and, and stay productive and get this work in. What about you? Doing the same as well, just trying to get in really good shape for my college career and just trying to do as much as I can while I have all this time. I hear you. That's right. So you're getting ready for college. You signed with Cleveland State. Right now, everything is shut down. Talk to us a little bit about what you've been doing to stay in shape with everything shut down and how you're preparing yourself to go ahead and, and transition to that next level. So as far as cardio goes, I run like a mile every day. Um, after that, it's probably like a point two or point three mile, just like cool down, just to get like ready to go for my actual the weight part, the workout. And then I come in. It's usually I think I go like two days with chest and then arms, and then two days is more of um leg lower workout. Um, as far as speed and agility goes and stuff like that, and I work with Willis's program on the app to keep me going. Okay. All right. That's what's up. So, I mean, you are, you know, you're not, you're not your typical athlete. You know, I can call you a lacrosse player, but really you're an athlete because, you know, you move the way, the way you perform is just different. And at some point in time in your career, whether that was when you were in middle school, high school, you had that epiphany, like, damn, this is, this is something I want to do in college. When in your career did that point come for Mary? When were you like, this is something I really want to do? Like, I'm I'm pretty good at it. Like, when did that happen? I would say middle school, around like sixth or seventh grade. Sixth or seventh grade? Mm-hmm. So was it like somebody came up to you after one game and was like, hey man, you you can do this. You should you should do it. And you're like, yeah, I can. Or you were like, you know, this is. I'm it feeling- was like so I started playing fifth grade but I was still playing football like all through middle school but sixth grade I played and I was fine but seventh grade I took off and I was just like I just want to focus on lacrosse for a little bit and that's when I really grinded as far as getting my stick work um up to speed where the other kids were at that started younger than me just to get it's like just to really grind and get because at that point the recruiting rules were that in eighth grade the coaches would start coming to recruit so I was like I got to get to be the best I can be by eighth grade so I really put in the work seventh grade and I was like I really want to do this in college like I love football since like third grade but I was like I'd rather do lacrosse I know I can get there's more opportunities in the lacrosse so I was like I'll just grind so that's what's up and and the lacrosse landscape has changed like so much over like the past even five years like it's crazy how much the sport is growing here in the southeast and you know how much more serious a lot of the athletes are taking the sport and really trying to get the opportunity to play at the next level. What is from your perspective, what what kind of what type of changes have you seen in the game of lacrosse in the past five since you started playing? Like as far as growth, scheme, you know, the type of athlete that's playing now, like what are you seeing amongst like with the change? Um, I think kids are starting to get more athletic now as before. Like I didn't see as many lacrosse kids going to trainers like you and trying to work on their athleticism since athleticism is more like something like it's like natural like you can't really you can like attain it but it's harder to be like at such a top level just being born with it so I think kids are getting way more athletic it's becoming more um non-traditional kids are starting to like get quicker and shiftier and all that so I think that's changed the game a lot and allowed more athletes have a better chance to play at higher level Right. So, I mean, one thing that, you know, from my end, I'm seeing is you have guys who might have been playing football and then they over to lacrosse. Do you think that kids who come in from other sport and play lacrosse, do you think they have an advantage or do you think they're more at a disadvantage and have a learning curve? Because you were you were a football phenom, too, right? You play DB. And yeah. so, I mean, defensive back is probably one of the, if not the most athletic position of football. So do you feel like you transitioning into lacrosse from football, that give you an advantage or do you feel like you like it kind of slows you down? I think it gave me an advantage. How? As far as knowing like the 
for DB work, at least just the cuts and just reading and reacting the ladder drills and all that, it really helps your foot and footwork super important across. So I think that gave me an advantage as far as the footwork part goes. I know if you've never touched a stick, it's a little hard. You have a learning curve, but as far as athleticism goes, transferring from a different sport definitely helps. Hmm. Let's talk, let's talk Cleveland state. So we're going to Cleveland state, you know, this coming season and you know, you had a few, you had a few different options of schools. I mean, cause again, you were, you were the best lacrosse player on your team this past season. And, you know, obviously you worked firsthand, not only on the, not only on the field, but also in the weight room and the gym and you put in a lot of work. Why Cleveland state, you know, what's, what attracted you to Cleveland state, you know, what factored into that decision? Um, I really like the coaching staff there and I really like what they're doing and they're a new program and they're independent. So I knew I had a chance as far as stepping on the field earlier next year and just coming in with our class to replacing their first class ever to go through the school. So that's, it was their first four years and they graduated this year. So I know we have a lot of kids and a good chance to step up and I really liked the area when I went on the visit. So it's a cool spot, and I'm going with my friend from high school. So, okay, so y'all buddy buddy, y'all went up there, and that okay, yeah. so you got somebody. That, okay, I see. You. So, um, you know, when I talk to my other kids from not just lacrosse who are getting ready to, you know, play in college, and my other football players and my other athletes who are in college, I always ask them, you know, what was the biggest factor, or what do you think was the most difficult part about the transition? And a lot of them talk about the demand, the time management and stuff, the, uh, you know, the, the strength and conditioning, the, you know, the discipline, what do you think might be the biggest challenge in transitioning out of high school and going to college? Probably for sure the time management. Mm. Touch, what do you mean? Touch on that. Like I've just heard that it's because you have so much time near yourself and there's, you don't have your, your parents, you're away. You don't have your parents bothering you. Like it's truly up to you with what you can do with your time. You can decide to do your work or not. And you have to go to practice regardless in games and all that. So it's up to you if you can really control the time and do what you're supposed to do in the time given. That makes sense. Now from as long as I've known you, you've been more of the kind of silent leader. Like, I, I mean, we, we thought we goof off and stuff like that, but I know you're not, I haven't seen you be as like bold like that, you know, you want to feel like, come on, y'all, let, let's do this, you know, but you are in fact a leader. And I think that your teammates and your peers will look up to you, you know, talk a little bit more about how you took on that leadership role in your team at Alatuna and, you know, your relationship that you had with the other players on the squad. Um, well, it started, I started playing varsity, like a straight varsity my sophomore year. And I'd always just been like, a I put my head down, just get to work type of guy. Like, I don't really like talking, not really a socialize unless I'm like with my friends or whatever, but I'm more serious when it comes to practice because I really care. So like, I just started putting in the work and I got to, I started my sophomore year over, I think like two or three seniors at attack. <clears throat> and like, I was probably... And I had to use my left hand, so like, and I'm right-handed. So just seeing, I guess people seeing me able to start varsity left-handed at a spot, that's like really crucial to the game. I was actually like excelling at that spot and I was helping the team contribute. It started having the upper classmen like respect me, the juniors and seniors. And when it came to my junior year, it was basically like, I was the guy that the offense had. Like I was the quarterback of the offense. When it came to problems, people would come to me and I'd lead the offense. I'd call up the plays. I'd make sure people were there they were. It's just that, like, people knowing that I work hard and I stay silent, I don't really goof off in practice. I'm not the type to, like, get the coach pissed. So I guess people just seeing me be quiet and I get on to people and hold them accountable just gave me that silent leader or whatever. So. I see that. You know, speaking of silent leader, I've actually spoken with um, – collegiate coaches at, you know, the highest level of sport, you know, SEC, Big Ten, um, some some of them NFL coaches now, different sports. And when they go through the recruiting process, you give me your opinion on this and you let me know your thoughts. But when you go through the recruiting process and I ask them, you know, what do you, what is it, what traits do you look for in an athlete when you recruit them? And a lot of the coaches said they like leaders, they like players who are coachable, 
players who, who can work hard. Obviously, they want talented players, too. And, you know, the more talented you are, you know, the higher up the coach might be or the program might be. But one of them that – one trade that every single coach had in common that they liked when they recruited and they offered athletes was the ability to be coached. Like, they, they listen. What is your take on that? I mean, do you feel like that's, that's, a, that's a criteria that you have that coaches at, at Cleveland State are going to enjoy? I think so, yeah, because I was the type in the huddle. I'd just be, like, full attention to the coach while other kids were just maybe joking or maybe just not paying as much attention. But I was always the one to come to coach after practice and say, hey, maybe we should do this with this play or maybe we should just write some stuff out or go see him during school. Just ask him about certain plays and just continue to watch film and just – I enjoyed the process of a coach telling me what I needed to do and what we should do here and there and how to make the team better through the coach and just being that guy that he can come to and just decide to give the key to like the offense and just hope that I can tell the guys what they need to do while he just relays information to me and I can get it out to them. It sounds like you're going to, you're going to do great. Just as good in college as you did in high school. And, you know, Sophomore year, um, you know, as an attack, you scored was 40 points, correct? Yeah. 40 points. And then junior year, you dropped 56 points on them. And then this season before everything got cut short because of you know, coronavirus, you were at how many? 35. 35. So we were just halfway through the season. So, I mean, I think that you were probably on pace for a good 80, you know, the 85. Yeah. My question to you is every single year you improved. You know, it's not just about the points. You score more points, which is you know, that's an indication that you learned the game, you got more comfortable, and you got more confident. What did you do to get better each year? Like what what did it take to get to that point? I would say freshman and sophomore year, it was more stick work than anything. So I wanted to make the jump from J V to varsity. Um, so it's more stick work and just getting better at lacrosse as far as that goes, my dodging and all that. Sophomore to junior year, after that summer, I came to you and got more. I, I remember I came to you and I just said I wanted to have more power in my dodges. And you made sure you got my legs right. So I came up junior year more athletic than I've been, faster than I've been, and just stronger and more powerful in my moves than I've been. I got to 56 points in like 12. I think that was my breakout year for sure. 56 points in like 12 games before I broke my collarbone. And then senior year coming down, I wanted to get my dodging better and I wanted to be less predictable because teams had now had me on the radar. So I tried to variate my dodging while still staying powerful. And I wanted to get better at shooting so I could be more of a threat than just being like a kid that can just assist kids. I want to get better at outside shooting. So I'd say working on those things along with coming to you every fall and during the summer, and not just the off season, but I come in, I remember specifically I came in a few times at 6 a.m. in the morning, the day of the game, just to get working with you, just make sure I get my work in for the week. So I'd say just maintaining hard, like a hard work ethic, and then just always wanting to get better and stay competitive each year. Absolutely. So what, so <clears throat> When you were in eighth grade, ninth grade, and you were determined to play varsity, and you made that happen for the last three years, three seasons that you had in high school, what do you tell those other lacrosse players who are in middle school freshman year, and they're telling themselves, "Hey, I want to, I want to play varsity." If they, if they came up to you and asked, "Hey, Mary, you know, what should I do to get to your level of play?" What do you tell them? Stay competitive for sure. Work hard. Um... Don't be afraid of the upperclassmen, but make sure you know your role. Uh, I would just say just work as hard as you can. Don't lose that work ethic. Don't start lacking or just trying to be with your friends. If you want to play at a high level at the next level, you'd have to be able to play up with kids above your age and just leave, like, get to the next level of your ability rather than just staying where you are. Facts, big facts. And since we're all on this whole corona lockdown right now, it's affected a lot of people in different ways. And unfortunately for you seniors and stuff in high school to have your season cut short, that's one of them. 
how did you deal with that mentally, like having your season stop? I mean, because I know probably, you know, emotionally, that's that's a lot. Like, I don't care what you say. You can be a senior. It doesn't matter. Like, to have your season cut short like that. But stay resilient and, and keep working. Like, walk us through how that was learning that, hey, this is my last game was beginning of March, you know, mid-March, whenever it was. Now it's like, how did it take you for it to hit? Like, this is it. Now I need to start transitioning and getting ready for college. Well, we had um, we had a practice the day that they sent out that tweet that we were going to be closed, but it was like midway through practice. But just when we got there, the vibe, it just felt like it felt off. The vibe felt off. So everyone was like, everyone, like, there's no juice. No one was really, like, vocal. No one was loud. No one was, like, goofing off. It was just, like, silent and weird. And then the middle of practice, coach was like, I'm sure you guys just saw that, like, they canceled uh, – they canceled school for next Monday and they said indefinitely. So we're just going to bring it up because I know everyone's heads are other where. So he's just like, all right. And everyone just went and I was like, dang, this is really happening. But it probably took like that first week of school. And then probably like midway through the next week, I was like, odds are like, I don't think we're going to go back. So I might as well just start getting better. And it just got like, I wouldn't say like this, it's like a fire. I just got like, really like sort of mad more than anything I just really wanted to compete so I was like I'm just going to get to the best I can I'm just going to be the best I can be for these next few weeks that we're in here I'm just going to work as hard as I can so that when I come out and when I go to Cleveland I'm at the top I'm at the top like I can I can't get any more I can't get any better so I want to be as high as I can be right now in size that when I leave I can come to you and you can get me to the next level that I've already been at, so. Well, you already know whether you're coming to me or not. We got program. We, we, we're going to make it happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm trying to get, like, I'm trying to come at, like, a new person. I'm trying to rebuild where I'm at right now. I, I, I feel you. Like, that's – we're going to make that happen regardless. Like, so that's – we already know. Because you probably – what, you don't report until July, August, maybe in the August? You don't go to August. Yeah, we, we're going to make it happen, so you can count on that. And while we're on August, what does Amiri bring to Cleveland State? What is Cleveland State getting in Amiri right now? I think a new level of speed mixed with um, a lacrosse IQ that hasn't been brought with so much athleticism. I think some kids have been just raw with athleticism, but not as much lacrosse IQ. I think I bring both to the table pretty well as far as a a pretty I'd say average pretty decent dodger um so I'd say just a pretty good dodger a kid that can feed pretty well I'm still working on my shooting but from like 68 yards I'd say my shooting is pretty accurate so there you go me on the field I'll be so okay they 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 getting the whole package yeah getting the whole package what is the legacy that you would like to leave behind at Alatoona? When people, when your teammates now who are going to be juniors and new athletes uh, come onto the lacrosse team, what do you want them to remember the most about Amiri at the school? Um, I made the kids around me better. I may have not always been like the friendliest kid, like I didn't talk too much, but I always wanted you to get better for like I was serious about maybe I was a little too serious but I always wanted the kids to get better around me so that when I left that they would still be fine they could still run the program well all right well Mary I appreciate you uh coming on guys I mean you you're packed with this wisdom and knowledge and you know I wish you personally nothing but success at the next level but I already know that's going to happen and I'm extremely proud as you know your coach um how far you've come as an athlete and, and your maturation into a young man. So I'm, I'm very proud of you. We're going to keep making this thing happen, but thank you for coming on. Thank you. I know you got to cut grass right now. So, <clears throat> but I uh, appreciate you, man. We'll, we'll get up soon. Just hit me up if you need anything, but thank you again for coming on. All right. We'll do. Thank you. All right. Signing out guys. Coach Willis from Willis performance training.